Okay, so this is day 16 of the 30-day uh, motion, uh, servo motion project we're doing uh, back on the uh, HMI system. So again, we still have the ACD file uh, just about complete. Um, so if you, you know, if you missed the, the prior videos, you could catch up uh, on the show notes below. I'll have those linked to it. And, uh, you know, just to kind of go over uh, what we're doing, kind of recap, uh, this is an emulated system. Again, this is 30 days start from scratch. Uh, ACD file complete uh, motion system and basically uh, making the HMI system to go along with it. So uh, where we last left off is making the header screen. Um, and I stopped the video because it was you know obviously going to take too, a little bit too long. So what I did in the meantime is I, I incorporated um, some of the elements that I wanted for the header screen. Uh, basically, what I did right here, uh, if you recall, we had we had the uh, basic screen that we, we developed, and uh, we came back and we were going to put the uh, alarms and events. So what I did is, is basically I, I came in and put alarms and events uh, alarms and events summary on there. And basically, I don't, I don't have anything like itemized down to subscriptions or anything like that. It's just going to automatically pull. This is going to automatically pull from our. I'll show you real quick. Automatically pull from the alarms and events that are populated from the um, RS Inter RS Links Enterprise uh, server. So as long as this box is checked, it'll populate. And as long as you have the um, setup when we have the alarms and events uh, down here enabled as long as that's there you should be fine so we kind of close that out um, so we put that there so we get a, a front view of, of basically of, you know how the machine is is running uh, I got navigations over here because in, in version 7.0 and higher you can actually do machine tracking or, or I'm sorry uh, screen tracking far as you can come down here and see history um, so basically this is just a, uh, a navigation history button um, in the action I have you know you can see um, you know, next screen previous screen uh, navigation screen so I chose to do the navigation screen and just have the um, you know just basically put in a description right there in that case, uh, I said, well, okay, well, we should go forward and have an easy way to go forward, an easy way to go back. That's the same thing. All I did is use the same kind of navigation button and then selected the other, you know, um, other options. So this would be next screen. Um, the one in front of it would be prior screen. So this would be prior screen. So this does, again, operates off the, the, um, the screen tracking system that is in place um, from 7.0 and higher so factory talk 7.0 SE and higher has this uh, this act this uh, ability right so in this case you know I put the uh, just basically put the name of the project uh, on the side just so we know exactly what's what it is uh, I put date and time uh, basically this is just a uh, you know you pull pull the date and time and you know, put it in at whatever format you want. Um, I just happen to choose the day uh, and the, the actual time down to the seconds. Uh, preferably, I wouldn't, you know, really don't want to see the seconds, but I kind of like to have the day and, and everything of that nature. So um, you can actually break it down to, you know, just show, um, you know, just as, as low as I got right here. You can just show the day. You can just show the, you know, um, numerics. Or you just show the time. Um, you know, I, I prefer in my most applications I do. I, I prefer to show everything. So again, I, I, I put that on there. Um, and the next thing would be I put up a, a multi-state indicator. So in this multi-state indicator, basically I put there's four states, right? Um, in our, if you look back in our in our system, we do have more than four states. So I may end up, or I'll probably end up is, is take that up. I haven't put the, the right naming, you know, naming convention in there for what the states do. So 
if you look back, I believe we have states. Okay, so we go into the um, state logic, and you can tell that, okay, so state one would be emergency stop. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. We'll copy that, paste, and then come over here and so state one is P stop, right? Okay, so state two, our state, I'm sorry, state zero is E stop. State one is going to be E stop not ready. So let's go there. Okay, system stopped and not ready. Uh, so that would be the same thing. We could say that. Let's just, let's just say stopped and not ready to give a good indication of where we're at. So we'll say stop machine stopped and not ready. Come in here, I'm not using state two, so state three. So obviously is the E stop circuit would be good, but in state three, this is stopped and ready. So we'll come back and copy that. And this is a good reason why you, in the ACD file, you can go ahead and put in your descriptions as you're doing your, your structure text, because you can come back and easily, you know, kind of just jump back and forth and just kind of just throw, throw your elements in there as, as you go. Rather than having to retype this stuff like a hundred times, you know, you can kind of make it a little bit easier on yourself. So um, we're at state three. We need to obviously have more states. So let's see. I think we went up to five. So let's put five. Okay, so what we'll do actually, we need to go six. Okay, so we went six, uh, even though we have five states, zero. One through, five, one through five. Um, so uh, with that said, we'll go ahead and just kind of copy this again, just copying it to get a placeholder, um, paste it in there, and we, obviously we're still going to be in the happy state of the machine running, so we, we want to be green. I'm not sure we're even using four, but we'll throw it in there just in case. It's not not going to hurt anything. Um, we can always come back um, in it here in a, in a minute to find out. So in state four, yes, we are using state four. State four is the machine start. So we'll come back and in state four we put machine start. And state five would be probably I think it's machine running. So waiting to stop. Uh, so this is where the cult naming culture kind of changes. This is really a waiting to stop, but it's machine running. So what we're going to do is we're going to call it uh, uh oh. So we'll call it uh, system running. All right. Actually, I did that on the wrong one. So system running. So go back to four and we'll populate four with what four is. Um, okay, so this is four, put four in there. Okay, so now we have everything the, the way it should be. And that way everything shows the actual state that it's it's currently in. So Real quick, if we were to run this, uh, we could tell what's going on. Um, but first, before we do that, I kind of want to describe. So I actually have the, the login too. And I'm not sure. Yeah, we still got a few minutes. So I have the login as well put on this, this screen. And this is multiple. So if this is a button. But if we look at it, um, let's see. Let's dig into it. Okay, so there's multiple layers to this. There's the system. Um, okay, so I, I basically made a string and a string layout or string uh, indicator and then put in the if the current user. So another if then and else function. So if, uh, if this user do this, if this user do that, um, and basically tell you where you're at in the system. So whether it be an advanced engineer, an engineer, operator, because uh, if you recall, we call the operator sign in when we build a client. 
Um, and then we have a log out button. So each of these, um, even though you don't, so you don't see anything, you don't actually see activity right here. What you will see though, um, so in properties, you go into properties and you see that you have a selection for a VBA code um, and you want to expose the VBA code. So everything that you want to control with VBA code, like right here, so I have the log in, I have the log in and the log out button controlled by VBA code. So again, in the properties panel, when you make the element, when you make, like make the button or whatever that you're going to use, make sure you come into the properties panel and change it from not exposed to VBA control. Okay, so with that said, I'll kind of go back over and describe what's happening. And again, it, it, with that said too, uh, let's open, open this back up. Notice the name of it. So it's going to have a name. You can put the name up here of your element. It's going to be in the VBA code. And that's this is going to be button login one, and the other one is button log out. So if I were to just click um, click open VBA code, right? Um, basically, I have uh, log in and log out. So if I look for like if I did a so if I did a button and then find next, you can see exactly where it's used you know, throughout the whole process. Um, so basically you, you would use it, um, the way that the VBA code is, is working is basically I'm, I'm calling for the user to, to sign in or sign out of the process. So um, with this said, this can be gone through a little more, more in depth if, if somebody were, you know, requests it, that I do that, but I kind of just, you know, that, that can get a little bit too, um, I would say time consuming to describe how the VPA code is, is actually done. It would kind of take away from this 30 day project. Um, but with that said, you don't have to use this. This is something that I choose to use. Um, and then the same applies for a server. Uh, so we'll kind of touch back on this a little bit later. Uh, but so to just to go kind of go over the elements real quick, um, you know, of, of how I did things is Basically, I, I, like I said, we, we added the alarms and events, alarms and events uh, summary on this. We added each one of these buttons that are actually just the navigation button controls, right? But basically, on that, you, you have your actions uh, changed in each one of them. We added the login, logout. We added the multi-state indicator, and we added the name of the project. So uh, again, this is just like kind of like a dummy text. Not nothing, anything special. Um, and again, we put the time, so we have the time on there as well. Well, with that, that kind of include concludes the the way I kind of built um, the header bar. It's going to be it's going to pop up. So it's and down here in the VBA code, um, not not the VBA code, but the macros down here. If you opened it, you would see that again we call the the main screen which is the one we made on the last video. And then the one I just completed here is the uh, Z header. That was the placeholder we put in. And make sure you put in your location where you want it, right? So uh, we want the, the display to be on top. So obviously that's going to be, this is more of a center. Just make sure you also put your uh, your elements where they, they should go. Like if I put that here, instead of here, it wouldn't work. Um, so again, to kind of go back over that, we display the screen, we pause one second, we display the screen, and we pause one second, and then we log in our operator. So um, with that said, we'll go ahead and, you know, because we're right at the 15 minute mark, we'll go ahead and conclude today's video. And this will, this will kind of go through and uh, kind of clarify things, you know. I, I don't want to, you know, waste a whole bunch of time, like spending hours building the screen in front of you, but... Um, just to kind of go over how I built the screen. Uh, this is kind of what I want to do. Um, you know, you, you'll see me build some screens, some screens you won't. I'm keeping this this process kind of simple. So, uh, you know, hopefully you kind of get the grasp, uh, the, the grasp of what I'm doing, you know, as far as, you know, everything here. It's pretty simple, you know, uh, what's happening. Besides the VBA code, 
which again we can dig down into another video or um, kind of go over but there is a lot of support with VBA on uh, Rockwell's website so uh, even though they don't support troubleshooting your VBA code they support showing you how to do it so if, if you don't have any experience in that you know you can kind of research it and find out um, but I'm not doing anything any you know any different than a really technical that it should be you know done so uh, with that said uh, I'll go ahead and close this uh, close this video out and uh, we'll pick it back up and and uh, I'll show you the server screen that I have and then what we'll do from the server screens we'll go ahead and we'll make a client after that on the next day and then after we make the client we'll go ahead and start building out some more elements so this concludes today and, and uh, again if you haven't seen some of the other videos that, that led up to, to where we're at today you know I'll have them on the show notes below and you can see them you know and, uh, and again as always I appreciate your time and I appreciate your support and thank you